Good morning. This is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. And today is the second episode of a series I'm doing on monarch biology. First episode was on how to find, identify milkweed, and learn some things about its amazing history. And today's video is about how to find monarch eggs. My friends and students in my biology classes in my past are always amazed. They're like, Mr. Taylor, how did you find these monarch eggs? They're they're so small. How, how do you find them? And so this video is going to be about how I find them. And it's really not that difficult. A lot of times we don't see things until somebody points them out to us. I know there's many wildflowers that in the past I walked by and I never saw until someone showed me it. And after someone showed it to me, I would see it all the time. Shark's teeth is another good example. Uh, it's fun to go look at a beach and, and go look for shark's teeth, but it's really hard if you've never found one. First, you have to see one, and then you know how to find it. So I'm going to show you how to find monarch caterpillar eggs on milkweed. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're going to find. And here's the make this invasive. It's exhausting. Dogwoods are flowering. And I just took a couple swipes. Terrestrial environment. Uh, produce seed pollen. And it's. And why do we want to find eggs? Well, what a great thing to be able to do is to take home an egg and some milkweed leaves and watch one of the most miraculous things in nature. I never get tired of seeing this life cycle. It's such a great opportunity for kids or homeschoolers or students or just anybody that's curious about the world to witness this amazing phenomena called complete metamorphosis and watch an organism go from egg to larva to the chrysalis and then emerge as a, an adult. And another great thing to do is to get your tagging kit from www.monarchwatch.com and put a tag on that butterfly and release that tag butterfly in the air. And then imagine if your butterfly makes this journey to Mexico and it's located there and you get feedback that your butterfly that you reared at your house, that you tagged and released into the air, was seen in the fir forest in the mountains of Mexico. How cool would that be? So this is a really good thing. It can help research. It helps connect you with nature. And it'll probably even help the butterflies if you keep them in the proper environment and make sure that they don't pass diseases from one to another, you can help the butterfly. So the first thing, of course, is you need to find a good patch of milkweed. And this is my like favorite patch, and I've learned where some of the milkweed species are. So check out my other video to see how to do that. The second thing is that I've actually watched female monarchs laying eggs, and they will flip from plant to plant to plant, and they lay only one egg at a time. The yep. monarch female here laying eggs on milkweed and I already walked up to one of the plants she was on and I saw that she was on the underside of a leaf and underneath that leaf like she is right now I found a monarch a egg. Now why do they only lay one egg at a time? Well it's because a milkweed plant has a limited number of leaves on it. And the monarch female wants to lay an egg on a plant that will have enough leaves to support their offspring from the egg to the caterpillar to the chrysalis stage. It's not like laying eggs on an on a oak tree where there might be tens of thousands of leaves. There, butterflies will often lay eggs or moths will often lay eggs in a big group with a couple hundred eggs in the group and then the eggs hatch and the caterpillars can migrate out across the tree and have as many leaves as they want to eat. So the monarch food is limited. You don't want to have to be climbing down from the milkweed plant and going to another one. So the monarch females are always sure to lay their eggs on one plant at a time. You'll never find a group of eggs. So bottom line, 
What does an egg look like? How big is it in relationship to the leaf? I can show you, here is a milkweed leaf, and you can see how big it is. And on the back side, there's an egg. Can you see it? Probably not. So they're very small. And let me see if I can bring this up to the camera. And you can see right there is a monarch egg right by in front of my finger. So that's the size of the thing you're looking for. If you look at it with a magnifying glass or zoom in with your camera or smartphone, you'll see that it's kind of shaped like this, almost like if you took a football that didn't have a lot of air in it and pressed it down against a flat surface. So you have this sort of football shaped curve to it. And there's tiny little striations from the top down the sides that you can see if you really, really look up close. Milkweed, top of the leaf, dark green, bottom of the leaf, light green, and there is what you're looking for. That is a monarch caterpillar egg. So the egg, they'll stay in the egg for three days. Right before the egg hatches, the very top of it gets a little black color, which is actually his head. And when they first hatch, a lot of times, the first thing they eat is they'll turn around and eat their egg case. So you won't find empty egg cases on the leaf. And then they'll start eating away at the leaves. So when they're eating the leaves, that's another thing to look for, is little dots, because they're not going to eat the entire leaf. They're going to eat around the hard parts of the leaf, the veins, which have a lot of cellulose in them, and go for more of the, the softer photosynthesizing cells of the leaf, and they'll start eating there. So you can also look for a pattern. Look for leaves that have been eaten. You may find larger caterpillars. So as they get bigger, they'll take bigger and bigger chunks out of the leaf. So the second thing you need to know is where are the monarch females going to lay the egg? Well, the eggs are always underneath the leaf. Why do they do that, you might ask? Well, I've speculated maybe two things. One, monarch eggs are nutritious. There's lots of animals, including people, that eat eggs as a source of protein. Because the egg is really packed with everything that an organism needs to start life. So they're very, very nutritious. They're very high in protein. You want to lay the eggs underneath the leaf to make them less visible and to hide them. The second thing is, where do these milkweed plants grow? They grow in fields in bright sunlight. And ultraviolet rays are bad for you, even for humans. If we don't put a sunscreen on and we're out in the sun for a long period of time, we can get badly sunburned by the ultraviolet rays. Well, think of this tiny egg with this tiny light colored shell covering on it. Ultraviolet rays would tear that apart, especially when it's in the sun for three days straight, 12 hours a day. So the eggs are always laid under the leaf. So we begin by looking under leaves for the monarch eggs. And what I like to do is gently bend the plant over and lean it a little bit, but I don't want to break the plant or break the stem. And I systematically, and that's the other part of it, I systematically go down the plant looking at each leaf one at a time. After I've looked at one plant, I'll move on to the next. And here's a nice milkweed plant. And I am going to turn over each leaf one at a time and look at it closely. And sometimes it's a little bit confusing because the milkweed plant will bleed as well. And there's often little white dabs like this, which almost look like an egg. But so I'm going to look at this plant and systematically turn each leaf over one at a time and look underneath. And go down the plant one leaf at a time, gently bend it over and check it so. out. It's important after you've done one plant to systematically move to the next plant. You may also find larger caterpillars or smaller caterpillars. So it depends on the timing. And uh, my experience is that the egg laying sometimes comes in sequences where uh, an adult population lays eggs. That population passes away during the summer and a new set of 
caterpillars hatch from their eggs, and then there's another wave of egg laying. So a lot of this is about timing too. So I'm systematically checking out this plant, looking at uh, underneath each leaf. There's a spider. You never know what you're gonna find out here. Sometimes you won't find eggs. Sometimes you'll find caterpillars. And here is a monarch caterpillar right here. Let's check out this one. See, there's a lady beetle. A lot of people call them ladybugs, but they're really lady beetles. And what I'll do is continue to look at one leaf at a time. And there is a monarch egg. So before I mess with that egg, let's look and underneath the rest of these and see if we can find any other ones. And I'll carefully break this one off. Let's see if I can get a close up for you live. And there's the egg. It's kind of shaped like a little football and it's got little striations on it. Check this one out too. Leaning it over, scanning the bottoms of the leaves, turning over ones that I can't reach, and let's take a closer look at this. And sure enough, there's another monarch egg. So that's how you find monarch eggs. And if you don't find monarch eggs, but you're out in this milkweed, Maybe you'll find one of these caterpillars, one of the little ones, or maybe these big ones, or maybe even you'll find a chrysalis. So keep your eye out for any of these things. So thanks for watching Nature in Your Backyard today. I wish you a lot of luck going out, finding a milkweed stand, and looking for monarch eggs. It's so cool to start with the, with the egg. But if you don't find just the egg, then hopefully you'll find some caterpillars too and get an opportunity to rear them at home. Remember, this is a good time to order your Monarch tagging kit now from www.monarchwatch.com. I think it's one of the best websites on the internet right now. It is full of activities and information and videos and storylines and covers the entire complexity of this amazing migration phenomena. No other insect in the world does a migration like this. And it's at risk right now. So anything we can do to help research, help our understanding of the monarchs, rear them, release them, tag them, create monarch habitats at home, and do many other things that can help this phenomena. So if you like what I'm doing, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I want to hear from you. Tell me if you found monarchs or eggs, or if you're having trouble, send me questions. I want to hear from you. I want to make this interactive, okay? See you later.